We actually had like 16 people in eight different countries. Uh, we wanted something to go with the theme of the Focha Film Days this year, called uh, Leading Ladies, The Legacy of Pudahepa. And I think also given that um, with the COVID-19 pandemic, it's also appropriate because we've been uh, seeing that the pandemic has not really affected everyone equally. And what we took as the topic was uh, equality um, is, are the conditions for men and women working in the area of documentary film really equal? And in fact, if you consider what we know about every pro profession across the world, the, the gut answer is no, obviously they're not equal. And in general, men have things better off than women. Um, on the other hand, uh, Marlo Porras, who is another director who has a film, The Moso Sisters, that's going to be at, uh, shown in Focha Film Days. When we were talking, she actually said that sometimes she felt it, it, was, it was an advantage to be a woman. And she said that, especially when they were filming in China, she and her camera woman, she felt that they could actually get, get away with a lot more because people just looked at them and said, oh, it's, it's just two women with a camera, no big deal. Um, I also remember in 2018, one of the filmmakers said that when it comes to documentary film, there were actually more women working than men. But the reason that she gave was that documentary films were kind of lo the low end of the totem pole and that what compared to you know, fiction films so that the, you didn't get the remuneration, you didn't get the, the respect. And I, I thought about that my own experience teaching in an art faculty in Turkey where our faculty was, um, everybody was happy in a way that everybody felt like they were treated equally, but the reason was that we were all treated very badly. Um, at any rate, uh, I think that the better question rather than are things equal is, um, what are the obstacles that are faced by women working in documentary film and what can women and men do to offer support so that these obstacles can be overcome? Now, in addition to the directors who are participating this year and in two those who participated in 2018 and 2019, we invited, uh, and people also in FOCHA, some of the people we work with, we, we invited four guests. Um, Deborah Zimmerman, who is executive director of Women Make Movies. And by coincidence, that uh, organization has supported three of the films that we have in Focha Film Days this year. Uh, we also invited Sevim Ishik, who is uh, a director from Turkey. She directed a documentary called Long Story Short, and she's now living in Germany. She's joining us from Mannheim. Uh, Sevna Somanjuolu, who is now head of the uh, NGO Demir Leblebi, and she's a founder of three different film festivals in Ankara, the Ankara Film Festival, the European Films Festival, and the Flying Broom Women's Film Festival, and she's joining from Ankara, Turkey. We also have Sezen Kaihan, who is uh, a multidisciplinary filmmaker, and founding member of a women filmmakers collective in Turkey called Women with Movie Cameras. And she's actually joining us from Belgium. Um, I wasn't gonna introduce everybody. I was gonna let everybody introduce themselves, but since I can actually see you all on the screen because not everyone is here, I can say that we have uh, Yelis Shukru from Cyprus, Baria uh, Kabadaydal from Turkey, Aneta Papathanasio in Athens. Enver Archak. Enver, are you in Ankara? Ank yes, Ankara. Uh, Phyllis Temizgetmish, who is in Izmir or Urla. And Om Singh, who is in Delhi, India. Yes? Yes, okay. And Rose is in Focha and she's hiding in the corner. Um, <laughs> Now, um, what I've done is I've, I've just asked um, the, the four uh, guests to help get the discussion started by talking about their own experiences. And I wanted to start out with Sevna, who, in addition to being an organizer, she's also um, a graduate of a university film program. 
Uh, Seven can also talk about her experiences uh, as a woman working in documentary film in the 21st century. Uh, after Seven, then Deborah can talk about women make movies and actually the support that their organization uh, gives to women. And finally, Sezan, who has a similar effort in Turkey, even if it's a little smaller and a little newer. And I think I might have to, ah, there you are. Uh, hello, everybody. And Deborah, I am very, very happy to see you again. I think it was nearly 10 years ago we were together in Ankara in Flying Blue Film Festival. And we had a very similar panel discussion discussing the being a woman in film industry. So after 10 years, we are again together and nearly speaking the same things. I think not much changed till then. Anyway, unfortunately, it has not changed. And uh, about the cinema, what I do, I still direct some uh, small films, animations and documentaries. Nowadays, I am making an oral history documentary focusing on being capital. Uh, I am interviewing uh, 20 uh, people which approximately ages 85 years so, uh, old. So they are talking more than four or five hours and I want to uh, cut their speeches to five minutes. So it is a nightmare. So I am exhausted again. I do want to say a couple of things in response to what Deborah said before and in response to what Seven has said before. I think it is oftentimes easier for women in production, but I'm here to say it is so not easier for women uh, once their films get made. And it's not easier for women in terms of their budgets um, in comparison to men's budgets. It is still an extraordinarily male-dominated uh, field and see that still in Hollywood. We can see that if we look at almost any film festival around the world, and I'm including documentary film festivals. Um, just to give you a little idea, I just saw last week the uh, AFI Film Fest because I look at it to look to see if there's films that we'd be interested in distributing. And they're very proudly saying that 51% of their films are by women. Um, which is wonderful. But when you look at the competition films, which we all know as people in the film industry are the films which are gonna get the most attention, there's almost no films which have been directed solely by women. Um, and even more important, um, there are very few films which are about women, which are both by and about women. And I see this all the time. I think I notice it because I'm looking for those films. Um, so that's really important. On the other hand, there are so many more women making films, particularly in called the developing world, in Africa and in very male dominated Asia, um, which is incredibly chauvinistic, a word that doesn't get used very often anymore. Um, and I'm really happy that there are so many more women that are getting the opportunity to make films. And I think that that is really positive. I also think that documentary as a genre has gotten so much more attention in the last five years, uh, and that's great. And the rise of platforms like Netflix and Amazon have helped, helped that, but it has really hurt smaller filmmakers who have a much harder time uh, getting their films onto those platforms because they're not making global uh, documentaries. So that's, that's all I'll say for now. But thank you, Deborah, for inviting me to have the opportunity. I absolutely love Turkey. I've been there quite a few times and hope to be back again. Well, ho hopefully, um, we, right, travel will not be something that's totally impossible during our lifetime, and we'll, we will be able to actually um, physically be together again. I'd like to say that at FOCHA Film Days, even uh, this year is uh, particularly focused on women, but even in the past two years, um, we haven't consciously tried to select you know, for any kind of gender balance, but it's, it's always worked out that way. So maybe it has to do with the perspective of the people who are um, selecting the stories as well. Um, we're gonna get cut off in about four minutes before we take a little break. So I just wanna turn this over to Sezen really quickly. Um, everybody can, you know, do what they do in their five minutes off and then we'll, we'll hit the second link and we'll be back. So 
Thank you, and Ceza. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I will also be as fast as I can. Uh, I'm a filmmaker and I worked in the film and TV industry for several years. And a few years ago, I met with very talented uh, women directors in Turkey, in Istanbul, like when we were cruising the festivals and was networking the festivals. Uh, and they decided, like they were in touch with the film Fatals in New York and they wanted to uh, start a branch of film Fatals in Istanbul. Uh, and after this, uh, we got together every week, we got together every month, like once in one month, uh, with other women filmmakers in Istanbul, uh, and also sometimes from other cities, from Izmir, or uh, maybe from Ankara sometimes. Uh, like once in every month, uh, somebody volunteered and we gathered in their house, uh, and the, the purpose of this meeting was to help the host uh, of the meeting. So it could be like, a, I need someone for a crew, for my crew, or I'm having difficulty with the situation, or it can even be just like to stress out and like the sharing the discrimination you experience in the industry. Uh, and then we also had a, a group uh, where someone, like for, we, use, we still use for networking, uh, and if someone needs anything, we're just trying to help. And sometimes we only use it for like to celebrate each other's success. When someone gets an award from a festival or from a town, uh, we just celebrate it uh, each other. And uh, I think two years ago, like Film Fatals had uh, an issue, like a legal issue with having a branch in Turkey uh, because they were going to be, they're going to be applied to as an NGO in the States, I guess. So we had to, to cut our relations with them because of this like legal problems. Uh, but we were so happy and so like helpful. It was really helpful for us. So we decided to continue. Uh, and now we have like uh, two collectives. One is called Women with uh, Movie Cameras. Uh, and it's a more active group uh, and one one is women making movies, it's a WhatsApp group that we use networking. Uh, with the women with movie cameras, uh, we still gather together uh, when someone needs, when someone needs something, uh, they can just want a meeting and then we gather together. Uh, and also we organize a script lab, like a script residency only for uh, women script writers last year. Um, and we had the EU fund to support this. And now we are also planning to organize a co-production fund for women filmmakers in Turkey. Uh, but the, the problem is because we are all filmmakers, uh, everybody is very busy with their own projects. Uh, so it's all volunteer uh, and it's really hard to get time. But even under these conditions, we're just like really working on it and hoping to succeed also the co-production market next year. So basically, this is what we do. Again, you know, I'm not a filmmaker. I'm coming from a, a, a different place where, you know, in other areas of the arts, you, you definitely experience a, a lot of the same difficulties um, uh, from, you know, visual arts, being able to find funding is, is a big issue. And I think a lot of this has always been to whether or not what, the finished product is if it's thought that this finished product is going to appeal to a large audience and for some reason or other there is an idea um, that there's a film you know and there's a woman's film and you know if it's a man's story well women will it's not just a man's story it's a story when it's a about a woman or from a woman's perspective it's a woman's story David, as the other man in the room right now, um, I don't know what your thoughts are about this, but I'm curious as to if all this seems foreign to you or understandable. No, I mean, I, I, I teach film studies at the University of Glasgow, as well as making little experimental short films. So these things are absolutely uh, central to me and to my teaching. Although I did, Last year I got asked to go to a, a meeting in Spain to speak about uh, women's documentary filmmaking 
by a group of women fools from Spain. And I did ask, why do you want me to come? Yeah. And, they, um, and they said, uh, because we want your labor, that we don't see the, uh, we don't see the role of creating a, create a bigger space for women in, women f in film culture as just a job for women. And I thought that that was a very, very simple, um, a very, very simple point. But for me, it quite nailed it. Because I think as someone who participates in quite a lot of film culture events, then it's often the case that when you have a, a meeting on specifically women's issues, then you will, if, you, if there's a plenary session and then they, they break into three sessions, it's often that there'll be one where there's a lot of women in it, will be, which will be discussing the role of women in cinema, and there'll be hardly any men in it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think men see it as their role to forward the position of women in cinema. And I think that that's a big mistake, in part, of course, because we live in a patriarchal world and men have been responsible for the marginalization of women in cinema. And therefore, we, I think it's incumbent on men to see it, that they are part, that they should strive to be an ally, a supporter, God, even a comrade in that struggle, depending on your kind of, your kind of background. So, yeah, I mean, I teach some stuff around this and it's kind of central to my thinking. I'm wondering now, Phyllis and, and Bari in, in Turkey and Aneta in Greece, do you feel like um, you have allies there among men in the same field? I mean, the, the way David talked about men needing to do this, do you feel that that kind of support is available to you? Do you feel that there is... Um, uh, men understand that it isn't their position to be supporting women filmmakers? Phyllis. Well, um, not, yeah, well, uh, hello everybody. Um, not only in filmmaking, uh, but any part of uh, life, uh, of course, men should, should involve uh, and, uh, and support the, uh, support the, uh, I believe in not only women rights but human rights. Uh, just, just, just try to, just try to be uh, focus on uh, being equal in e every situation. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, just, just supporting particularly women uh, in situation. Uh, yes, this is a patriarchal world. Uh, yes, this makes uh, men uh, uh, privileged uh, 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 against women, but I still insist on uh, asking men to and women uh, to to support human rights in, instead of any uh, particular uh, species, because uh, as we are connected, uh, as we are. As we come, as we are able to come together, uh, nobody, uh, nobody would um, need to need to suffer from being, you know, uh, ignored, neglected. If everybody supports each other in every field, not only in mm -hmm. filmmaking. Bari, I know you wanted to say something, and I'm also curious because you're one of several um, filmmaking couples whose films we've shown at uh, FOCHA Film Days. And I don't know, you know, where, where there's a husband and wife team of producer-director um, or, or a couple of producer-director working together. I don't know if this is a common thing or just a, just a coincidence, but how is that with the two of you working together? Do you, do you feel um, that you have any kind of particular gender roles or that people from outside would be willing to, you know, talk to your husband but not talk to you? Do you, do you have to divide up labor? Uh, hi everyone. Um, Actually, um, um, maybe luckily, uh, I ha I have no problem with men in <laughs> in the documentary <laughs> making. Uh, and not uh, I mean not uh, I'm not talking about just teammates. Um, and I believe and I um, experienced that in Turkey, uh, people, men or women, uh, love. Uh, women filmmakers, documentary filmmakers, um, but um, I think the problem is um, while making documentary film, especially in Turkey, is actually 
process. I mean, uh, we have um, producer problems, for example. Uh, there, there are so many people working in documentary filmmaking area in Turkey, but many of them, um, they are tr uh, trying to uh, solve all problems um, um, alone. I mean, um, because they are directing, shooting, uh, making everything um, without a producer. Uh, for me, uh, the main problem is this actually not if um, to man or woman it's my experience and as a woman uh, the main difficulty is in the life in my life is to have children and uh, trying to uh, continue filmmaking documentary filmmaking with two children it's really difficult mm -hmm. because you have to also uh, sometimes in your life uh, for example, I, I had to pause uh, second times because of the children mm -hmm. and uh, now <laughs> now trying to uh, come back to filmmaking um, and you know in this pandemic pandemic period it's not easy um, uh, no one for us to <laughs> so so it, so it's it's a that is a lot of stuff that you're doing. Sorry? I mean, it's, Sorry? That's, there's, there's a lot of things that you are doing. I mean, it seems like there's definitely a lot yeah, I have, to manage. Uh, actually, I have to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a choice. I mean, <laughs> I have to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Aneta also, when you were talking about working with children, I, I saw Aneta nodding her head there um, <laughs> to say that, mm, yeah, this is definitely an issue. Aneta? Okay. Hello, everybody. And um, I have another experience. I am uh, I'm an actress and filmmaker here in Greece. And I found out as a, as a filmmaker uh, that we had a um, woman filmmaker. We have also some uh, benefits. I mean, there are so many women festivals. Uh, that men don't have. <laughs> men don't have uh, their own special um, men festival. And um, also, uh, there are also, um, as I saw from uh, Deborah from Women's Make, Women Make Movies, uh, it was, um, uh, there are so many feminist studies at the university so we can, uh, <laughs> who can show our films. Uh, this is a different kind. Uh, somehow we have uh, some uh, more opportunities sometimes, uh, but um, uh, here in Greece, uh, I didn't have uh, any uh, problem as a woman uh, doing um, uh, cinema. But I have to admit that I, I didn't, uh, um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't want to have children because of. I thought it. I will have problems in my career. So this is something that I have chosen. That uh, I, I, I choose this um, way to to, um, to uh, do to to create my career. Let's say, and the problem. I, the only problem I had because. Um, Mm, I didn't think we have any uh, problems. Um, uh, uh, even even when I went to Afghanistan, everybody asked me, "You were a woman?" Yes, the women in Afghanistan have problems uh, doing uh, theater, uh, like in my film. Or, uh, um, but uh, I, as a foreign woman uh, in Afghanistan, uh, they respected me. So it was uh, something that I, I, nobody, everybody asked me, you as a woman there. Yes, but uh, somehow uh, I could manage um, uh, the situation uh, in Afghanistan because I was a foreigner. O of course, the, the women there have uh, many um, problems. Uh, the only problem I had, um, well, I realized that there is a, a, a difference uh, was when I had to cooperate and I had to co-direct with a man a film. 
then I realized that sometimes um, uh, my, the, 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 the editor didn't get my opinion, <laughs> probably uh, um, uh, mostly the man had um, right. And this was the only time I said, oh, it's because it's this is the not so equal. Um, but I, because I'm a very insisting person, I always insist, so I don't uh, have really, so I think uh, it's something sometimes that um, we put ourselves and it's good to, to discuss and get over it and, uh, and be, is what uh, we said, it is uh, uh, human rights and not only women's rights. Uh, sometimes uh, it's very important to think about this uh, human rights. And I wanted to say just that I was in a festival in, uh, my film was in this um, Flying Broom Festival. <laughs> yes, some time ago. And also, uh, also, I don't know if this is the same. It was the EU Human Rights Film Days that it was in Ankara and Istanbul. So I had, <laughs> so this is uh, Playing With Fire which uh, um, I found it very interesting uh, that um, this particular film was in uh, Turkey so many times. So this is um, very good. <laughs> and I always, uh, um, always looking for um, different kind of festivals like uh, this. Uh, I like to- I, ha I have to say, Aneta, that- um, <laughs> We've actually, you know, there, there have been comments to us about, you know, how do you choose the films, which are the films that you're looking for. And I, I think that one of the reasons that Playing With Fire, um, again, this is actually recommended to, to me, your film, by a, a colleague of yours whose mother lives in Focha. Um, and when I saw the film, I, I thought, especially with what's going on now in, in Turkey with um, a fight to have the, you know, Istanbul, um, Sözleşmesi, Istanbul Sözleşmesi, the Istanbul Convention that, that Turkey doesn't want to be part of this, this anymore. And there, there's a, a lot of problems with um, uh, women's rights, with um, the killing of, of women, um, that the situation really, you know, it, it's not as drastic as things are in Afghanistan, at least the way that it seems in your film, but, but it's definitely resonated with some people here um, who are interested in Focha film days. And the other thing is that I was, I was very um, sad to hear because I know the film you shot in 2012 through 2014, and then just a, a couple of months ago, I remember hearing on the news about another, um, I don't remember, I think it was a director this time, but a woman who was um, killed because of um, her working, you know, in this creative area that is something yeah. that a woman was not supposed to do. Um, so uh, There are many countries that it is, uh, uh, of course, uh, I was talking about uh, Greece, uh, and I think there are many, many uh, countries that there is really a big problem about uh, um, for women. And I'm very much interested in doing uh, this kind of films uh, about, and, uh, about uh, women rights. But um, I was talking about myself and about uh, uh, Greece and um, I don't know in uh, Europe, but um here we didn't have this kind of uh, problems uh, but of course it's very very bad and also it was very interesting um of, and this is for my uh, later film uh, that i'm I, it's very interesting about uh, laughing uh, that i heard that um, uh, laughing is it's not um, proper it's not uh, the right thing that a woman must do, laugh loudly. So, mm -hmm. and I heard it also in Tur uh, from um, uh, somebody in Turkey saying that. So it was also, this is also very interesting that uh, if we cannot laugh loudly, then it is a big problem. <laughs> and um, 
Yes, I, I think, but uh, still, uh, still, uh, I think we have uh, uh, to fight uh, together for uh, uh, men and women for uh, really human rights. I, I believe that. So it's not to be totally separate. This is my opinion, <laughs> but together. Can I just uh, uh, add something? Sure. So, sorry for please. Jumping, but no, please. Uh, I did. I didn't know uh, Enver was going to be at the event, uh, but he's also the producer of our upcoming documentary, uh, and it's all women crew, like uh, the creative team, uh, all formed by women, and it's a documentary about a female fan club, like soccer fan club, uh, formed with women in their eighties, uh, and. I think like when you are when you're talking about like how to support, uh, it's a collaboration, but uh, as Bahri also mentioned, it's really hard to find producers in Turkey. And especially for women, it's a big problem that uh, it's a trust problem that producers are having trust issues uh, with the women directors. Uh, I want to thank him again for being with us and supporting us in this project. Deborah, can uh, I can I add something? Yes, I was trying to I had to unmute myself yeah. to be able to tell you to unmute yourself. Go ahead, Deborah. Yeah, no, I just thought this is also very interesting. Um, and I just wanted to add a couple of things. Um, I mean, first of all, I think that that is a really key thing about men producing for women directors. I go all over the world to pitching forums, and it's very, very rare that you see men producers with women directors, but it's extremely common that you see women producers with men directors. Um, and I think it's so important that women produce for other women and men produce for other women. And it's one of the reasons why we do uh, webinars on the business side of the business to help women get those skills. Um, and yeah, so that's one thing that's really important. The other thing I wanted to say about um, partnering and, and also uh, having children is I remember being on a panel with two directors, um, Heidi Ewing, who just made a really beautiful film called I Carry You With Me, which is gonna be on, I think it's on Netflix. It's an amazing, amazing fiction film, but she made a lot of documentaries with um, her partner. And they said that they partnered because each of them wanted to have children and that when one of them was having kids, a kid, the other one could pick up the slack. And when that one had a kid, the other one could pick up a slack. Slack, so that it was a way of really compensating and helping each other. And I think that that's also a really, really important strategy um, for women to, to do, so, yeah. Oh, that's, that's great organization, great planning, I like that. Um, I, I know also Aneta, I think, is another person who has, uh, Playing With Fire is a film with a women director and about women, but your producer Aneta is also a man, yeah? Or, or did it? Yes, uh, I really had, I was uh, lucky because uh, for all my films is a, a very good man producer, but he doesn't, but he, he's a producer for commercials, so he doesn't care at all about what I'm doing. He trusts me, and so I have a, a woman with me uh, who is also um, a producer uh, doing all the, the difficult uh, work uh, to, to go to try to find uh, fundings uh, but because it is a very difficult work what I'm doing uh, in uh, these countries uh, the, um, uh, we, we needed a really big uh, um, production company so we went to so we are uh, the last my last uh, three four films is uh, with this uh, big company who is a uh, a man abuser, uh, but he let us do, he trusts us and let us do whatever we think it's needed and help us uh, a lot, but it is um, a trust. So uh, it was a very good, um, as I said, I, um, I don't know if in, in Greece we have problems. We have this kind of problems like with uh, children. Yes, the women have problems uh, with children sometimes. Uh, uh, about our opinion, but uh, uh, little by little, especially in documentaries, the women filmmakers have, uh, uh, they're in a very high level at the moment. I wish Om would have been able to stay um, to get sort of a perspective of what's going on in India. Um, and also, I know Aitam is going to be here from Israel. 
uh, Linda um, was going to be here from Scotland, and uh, Yelis, who is in Cyprus, uh, sent a message saying that actually she had to leave because she had to go take her daughter to a gymnastics uh, meeting or some gymnastics event. So right there you have the issue of a woman <laughs> taking care, care of balancing career and, and family. Um, yes, Sevna, you've got your hands up, please. On um, mute, yeah. Yeah, there is two things I would like to mention. Uh, Aneta and Phyllis mentioned that uh, they are for human rights, not women's human rights. But I have to mention as being an activist feminist that we still need women's human rights. After 40 years, remember the convention, CEDAW convention, which is a very legal document that we need women's human rights. We still need that. Yes, I believe working with men, and I did, but let me give you a secret. Older men do not learn. They do not learn that we can be equal. So the only thing that we can do is just patiently wait them to die. Uh, I am now trying to support a young film di director, documentary women director. She has an amazing project and we are looking for a supporter from Greece also. So Aneta, may I contact with you? Just may. And Deborah also, she is very excited to uh, have the chance to present her project to women make movies. May I just give your contact to her just to present herself to Deborah also, women make movies. Okay, and the last season, as I heard from you that you have some filmmakers in Ankara also, I am looking for a technical crew a operator and editor and the lightning director, women I am looking for because I am just now working with men and I hate to just listen to their discussions about the cars and football. Thank you. I, I think you also have Enver there in Ankara who might be able to help you out in finding uh, people to work on your film and uh, that means women as well. Um, just I, I I am making just boring documentaries just to turn, earn money to support my dreams. So uh, it is not a very fruitful uh, sets that I create and or uh, projects I work now. It is just for the money. But I would like to work with women crew. Seven. I th I think that's very important because. Um, there, there is an organization in, in Izmir where we are, we're in Focha, just outside of Izmir, the Izmir uh, Film and Television Producers Association, which is an NGO here. One of the things that Tassin Ishbelin, who is the head of this um, NGO, said to me was that um, for Izmir especially to be able to develop a film industry is that, that there need to be people who, who have the experience, who can offer, you know, fill these positions if we want to bring people to um, Focho, to Izmir, to actually make films here. And so that means young women filmmakers as well, you know, people in the film industry that need this experience. And even if it's just on uh, something you're saying, Seva, that might not be very artistically rewarding, but it, it's there just, to, you know, to pay the bills, it's experience. And it, it's experience. And it's important for young women also to, to get that experience. Um, yeah, Aneta, please. I see your hand up. Yes, the only thing I wanted to add is that the biggest problem we have now is funding our documentaries. Uh, especially here in Greece, it takes uh, more than a year to get uh, some money from the Greek documentary, Greek uh, uh, film center or from Greek television, uh, more than a year. So we are dying because it's very difficult to do a documentary. And this is the biggest problem we have now. And I think it is a very big problem 
uh, in general about funding because we are too many now that we are doing uh, <laughs> documentaries. Anetta, I, th I think that um, maybe the, the pandemic, um, you know, I mean, first of all, it's tragic because it's tragic because people are dying from it. Um, and I, I think we need to not forget about that. Um, but one thing that it has done is it's forced everybody to try to figure out new ways of doing things. I mean, there are a lot more, um, other than communication, there probably are not a lot more things that need to be solved, but as far as communication goes on, I mean, we're all sitting here, we've learned how to do a Zoom meeting, and we can actually have you all here where maybe we, we couldn't have all come together to FOCHA, you know, for a live festival. And you talked about um, remote production. I know um, Marlo, who is not here, who is working on a film and has about 10% left to shoot, but she can't because it's, um, she can't go any place because of the virus, but she can get a, um, a camera person or, or get a crew in another country. Um, so as far as developing new ways of cooperation, I think maybe we need to think about that as, as kind of an, of an advantage um, that, that or something I don't want to say advantage, but a, a, a new way of looking at things that would actually be great because we're able to communicate together um, and turn a disadvantage into an mm -hmm. advantage. 